today's reading is from Matthew chapter 15, beginning at verse 21. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and is suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Even sermons need props. Well, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to week five of our Pray Like series. So far we've met Paul, Jonah, Hannah and Jabez. And they're all very different, aren't they? Uh, they're all encouraging us as we learn to pray. I wonder if you've had a favourite story so far, or maybe you've picked up a prayer tip from someone in our congregation. I think I've just been so encouraged uh, to hear so many different people pray, so many different people both in the Bible and also here in this congregation. Well, as we read today about the Canaanite woman, I'm particularly encouraged because Here's a woman who we know so little about, and yet she too is someone who prays. Uh, particularly as Caroline was um, telling us a bit about Jabez last week, uh, the importance of names, this lady doesn't even have a name that is recorded, and yet she too is someone who prays, and we hear about her prayer. Well, as uh, this week I was... Um, Thinking about this woman and her story, I um, have been reading the book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse. Perhaps you've come across it. Uh, if you haven't, it's one of those books that you sort of chew over and ponder. Um, you don't sort of read it all the way through and think, great, I finished a book. It's sort of a coffee table book. And I came across uh, a couple of pages that I thought were a great summary of our sermon today, our, our story today. And I think the pictures might be up there. I'm hoping because it's really hard for you all to see. There we go. Uh, the boy is sitting on top of the horse and he asks the horse, what's the bravest thing you've ever said? Asked the boy. Help, said the horse. And the next page says, asking for help isn't giving up, said the horse. It's refusing to give up. And as we read the story of the Canaanite woman, I thought, it's such a good summary of what this woman asks for. She asks for help. She's determined to get help. Today's prayers might be one of the most simple in the Bible. It's certainly one of the shortest. Our person of prayer, she doesn't even have a name, and yet she prays and Jesus listens. We don't even really know much about her. She's a Canaanite woman. That's sort of all we know. And yet her prayer is recorded. And so today we take the time to learn a bit about it, about her faith, that even the simplest prayer can change a life. 
So we're going to take some time to delve into the world of Jesus and this woman at the moment that they meet. So will you imagine with me? We Jesus disciples and and Jesus, we've been spending a lot of time teaching the people. Jesus often teaches in parables and, you know, they need explaining. Some people just don't really get them. And then, you know, the Pharisees, they arrive and they often cause a scene. They assume they know all the right answers. (laughs) Typical. But Jesus sets them straight. He's gentle but firm. We are to honour and love God first. Those things go above the traditions of the past. Do you remember that amazing day when Jesus fed all those people? Gosh, it was wonderful, wasn't it? And then he walked on water. It's just been a bit of a whirlwind. And so it's only right that we take some time for ourselves, a moment to catch our breath to rest, to spend some time just away from all the crowds and the busyness, even some of the controversy. We just need a bit of a break. That's all right, isn't it? And so we left the city and we went out towards the coast to this area of Tyre and Sidon. They aren't Jewish areas, but we didn't go right into the city. We stayed out in the countryside when all of a sudden... This woman came towards us. She was yelling, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is tormented by a demon. What did she think she was doing? Why would this woman, this Canaanite woman, even approach us? What was she thinking? It's like she'd lost her mind. Or she'd forgotten all due decorum that was going on in civil society. Honestly, no Canaanite ever approaches a Jew. Has she actually forgotten the history between our ancestors? And why is this woman approaching a group of men? Maybe she's one of those women. We do not want anything to do with her. Well, Jesus didn't answer. Wise move. We we actually advised Jesus to send her away. She cannot be up to any good. Well, Jesus answered us in his usual enigmatic style, saying, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I mean, I took that to mean that he agreed with us. This woman should just go off home. We do not want any trouble. Remember, we came out here for a bit of a break. And yet, this woman was persistent. I mean, she must have been pretty desperate. She just kept coming closer. She knelt down in front of him. Lord, help me. It sounded like a prayer. She didn't even seem to really care about the rest of us. She just looked straight at him. It's like she knew that he was different to the rest of us. I don't know how. It's like she knew that he had what she needed. How? I, how did this Canaanite woman know? Well, Jesus' reply was blunt. It's not fair to take the children's food and feed it to the dogs. Well, that's right, I thought. We've heard all along that Jesus is here to bring the message to the Israelites. The Canaanites have brought us nothing but pain. 
But just looking at her, kneeling on the ground, I couldn't help but feel a moment of pity. Like something should be done for her. And then, you know what she said? She said, yes. She agreed. And I didn't get it. She agreed with Jesus. Yes, Lord. And yet, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Whoa, maybe this Canaanite woman has some understanding of who Jesus is. Well, then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Well, if ever we saw a prayer of faith and determination in the Bible, this is it. It encourages us that anyone can come to Jesus in prayer. Anyone can come to Jesus and expect an answer. Lord, help me. It's a simple prayer and it's answered. The Canaanite woman is rejected three times by Jesus and it's sort of a mystery to us. Why does Jesus reject him? We don't really know. Was it to teach persistence? Was it because Jesus is still focused primarily on his mission to the Israelites? Maybe he was just a bit tired. Maybe it was another reason. It's just not clear. And yet what is clear is that this woman and her prayer had a profound impact on Jesus and also on us. This woman's words were so profound. They not only moved Jesus to answer her request for healing, but they made it into our prayer book, as Mark noted earlier. It's a common part of our communion liturgy, acknowledging that we can only approach God because of Jesus' holiness. This woman knew that, and we're reminded of that. We pray these words, and I think they might come up on the screen, that we do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so as to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. When we read the dialogue between Jesus and the woman and we consider her prayer request, something profound happens in this story. Jesus has made clear that his mission is primarily focused to the Israelites at this point. And this isn't the first time in the Gospels that we've heard that. That mission does expand later on in the story. But at this point, that's his priority. But this woman, she's phenomenal. She's risked her reputation to leave the city on her own to approach a group of men, of Jewish men, to beg for healing for her daughter. She's put it all on the line. Nothing is left. And the response to us to be rejected three times in a row. She's so persistent. I love it. She doesn't take it lying down. And rather than argue angrily, with Jesus, she takes a position of humility. She knows that she isn't worthy to approach Jesus, and yet she approaches him anyway. She wants to be blessed 
to be fed by Jesus and she'll take what she can get, even if it's the crumbs. She knows in her wisdom that the crumbs of Jesus are far superior to the riches of the world. I sort of really want to know her backstory. How does she know of Jesus? How did she learn such persistence? Where does this great faith come from? And what happens next in her life? I bet she doesn't keep this story to herself. Well, what we do have is this little snippet of her life. And I'm so grateful that we get to learn from it. Her insistence to claim her crumbs, to have her prayer answered is honoured by Jesus. He sees her great faith. He commends her faith. Great is your faith, he says to her. And the contrast here in chapter 15 is huge. If you read the whole chapter, just a few verses before, Peter, one of Jesus' closest disciples, is actually berated for his little faith. So the fact that this unnamed woman has been honoured by her great faith is significant. Over the weeks of our Pray Like series, we've seen such a vast array of different prayers. We've seen bold requests. We've seen really long prayers. We've seen three-word prayers. We've seen prayers prayed privately. Prayers shouted out loud. Insistent prayers. Prayers from every walk of life. And what strikes me today from our prayer is that a prayer of faith never goes unheard. Just like all the prayers we've been reading, the Canaanite woman's prayer was a prayer of faith, that Jesus would listen and respond. Her prayer was one of desperation, but it was also one of great faith. Sometimes it might feel like our faith is hanging on by a thread, or that we don't really understand what's going on in God's big picture. And yet we are reassured that even the smallest faith can have a radical effect. Just a few chapters after this story, Jesus, heals, he heals another small child and he taught his disciples that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Now mustard seeds are really tiny, if you've ever seen one, and it might feel like something that small isn't actually that effective. Or, like an actual mustard seed, if you plant it, it takes a long time to grow into a very large plant. I think sometimes it feels like our, our prayers can work that way too. We plant them and it takes a long time for them to grow, to be answered. Sometimes, like our story today, our prayers are answered straight away. And I think rather than... Uh, a mustard seed, it's a little bit like dropping a drop of food dye into a bowl of water. Let's see if this, I'm not sure, hopefully you'll all be able to see this from where you are. But As soon as you drop it in, it takes effect straight away, changing the environment around it. And you can't take that out. That water is immediately changed and keeps changing. That's the effect even of a small prayer of faith in our lives. The Canaanite woman put it all on the line. She prayed to Jesus with persistence. She didn't leave Jesus until he acknowledged her and she got an answer. She brought her helplessness to Jesus, her prayer of help, and he listened to her. When we come to Jesus in our self-reliance and pride, we're often not open to what he might want to do in our lives or the answers that he might have. But when we come like the Canaanite woman, in complete helplessness, like a child, to 
totally dependent. It's then that we can pray and genuinely seek his will to see him answer our prayers. This is what we're praying each time we pray the Lord's Prayer, for God's kingdom to come, for God's will to be done on earth as in heaven. In this relationship of prayer, us and God, we're acknowledging that we're the human in that relationship and God is the creator who knows best. I think the astounding thing is that it's God the creator who wants that relationship. Uh, It still astounds me and I think that he wants us to keep praying to him. He wants us to pray in faith. He wants to answer our prayers. I was actually just reminded of this yesterday, of the many times that I have prayed and that God has answered prayers, uh, often in surprising ways. Uh, To give you an example that relates to you all, uh, late last year, I had one of those conversations or prayers with God where I said, hey God, so about work, I probably need to work out what to do there. End of prayer. It was was one of those really broad, vague prayers that I didn't really know what to pray. And I was like, so just that old chestnut about my job. Here, have that. Anyway, it was a really random prayer. And I think God was like, "Ah, don't worry, I've got that sorted. Anyway, and a day or two later, I had a conversation with a friend who encouraged me to think about and write down what were the sort of things you would look for in your next job. The time frame being now and in the next five years. That was the time frame, right? Anyway, so I was like, that sounds like a lot of work. I don't want to write a list of the sort of things I'm going to have to do in another job. But, you know, what's the dream? What are the sort of things I'd like to do in my next job? Anyway, so I like, and, you know, this is like COVID fog brain, and I was like, oh, fine. Anyway, so I finally got my butt into gear, and like a week later, I wrote down a list of things that I would sort of want to do in another job that I was applying for. Like three days after I finally wrote my list, uh, Mark called me, as in Mark here, I'm pointing there because he usually sits at the front. Mark called me. Hi, Karen. You know, I've just got the job at Oak Tree. I'm looking to hire a curate. And I was like, oh, are you now? I like Mark. That sounds fun. What are you looking for? And he rattles off some things that he thought, this is what I'd like this person to do. And I was like, hmm. I got my list and I was like, Yeah, all of those things were on my list, except one, one of the things. And I was like, probably definitely, yeah, God knows better. Probably shouldn't be doing that. Um, And I was just like, God, that's funny. And then I was like, oh, no, now I need to do that. Anyway, long story short, here I am. Um, Yeah, it was really great. And I'm, I'm really glad I'm here. Anyway... It just made me chuckle that I finally got my act together and wrote my list and then Mark called and God was clearly like, see how I arranged all that when you gave me your, like, what should I do about my life prayer? It was really great. It was pretty clear to me that God was answering my simple but clearly very important prayer. And that was nice. Moving on. That's how I ended up here, everyone, just in case you were wondering. Um because I prayed about it. I think Jesus sees us. He knows us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. I didn't know I was looking for a job, but clearly God did. Jesus hears and answers everyone's prayers. I think he answers us whether they're deep, profound life prayers or whether they're just the everyday prayers. Both of those prayers are really important. And I think chapter 15 of Matthew is a great example of that. Even though we don't know the Canaanite woman's name, her prayer of great faith ended up in our prayer book. It's astounding to me. How amazing. What a champion. Despite Peter having little faith, 
Jesus used him to begin the church. How amazing. Our actions and faith might not be recorded in any book. They might not be known by anyone except the people that we come to church with every week. And yet, they're still so valuable. They're just as valuable as Peter, the Canaanite woman, all the people that we hear about in the faith. They're just as valuable because they are known by Jesus. So today I wonder, what will you pray in faith for? Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you long for us to pray to you in faith. We thank you that you have made a way for us to pray. And we thank you that you give us faith, even though we feel like we have very little. We thank you that you encourage us in this. And we thank you that we can gather together and encourage each other. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.